Today we want to learn how to conquer our three enemies. Believe it or not, know it or not, understand it or not, each of us has three enemies. Before we talk about those three enemies that you have and how to conquer each of those three enemies, there's a story in the scriptures uh, from the prophet Elisha. Elisha. And uh, he was talking to the king and he said to the king as he handed him some arrows, he said, take these arrows and show me what you intend to do with your enemy. And the king took the arrows and he went like this on the ground. And it says that the prophet of the Lord was wroth with the king. He said, you are not going to destroy their enemies because you have the wrong attitude. What you should have done is taken these arrows and you should have smitten the ground utterly over and over again. And then you would have the right attitude that would enable you to destroy the enemies that are going to come against you. I want us to learn from this. Because if we have a lax attitude towards our enemies, we shall not destroy them. They shall probably destroy us. We must utterly destroy the enemy. The enemy is not to be played with. There's too much at stake. And these three enemies, if you don't destroy them utterly, will damn you. Damn you forever. Damn me forever. We must learn the three enemies and exactly the precise steps of Scripture. And aren't you glad the Scriptures give us exactly that, the precise steps on how to beat these three enemies? Well, let's go to enemy number one. Here it is. The enemy number one that you have is what the Scriptures call and refer to as the world. Look at the Scripture with me. Do you not know that friendship of the world is, look at this, is enmity with God. And whoever wants to be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. These two are mutually exclusive of one another. You cannot be the friend of God and be a friend of what the world stands for and represents. Let's look at the next verse. Do you think that the scripture is saying this in vain, that the spirit, that Holy Spirit, that dwells in us is lusting to envy? <clears throat> now, there is a spirit in the world. And let's talk about what is exactly in the world that is so much a part of your enemy that you need to deal with it utterly. Look at the scripture. For all that is in the world, look at this now, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Look at this. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. Now, look at this again, because it's important to understand that there are three things that are approved of in the world that will destroy us. They are part of the world's way of thinking. They're part of the world's attitude. Here they are. Number one, it's what the scriptures call the lust of the flesh. All that is in the world, number one, the lust of the flesh. Well, what is that? The lust of the flesh, of course, is referring to immorality. The second thing is the lust of the eyes, materialism and covetousness. And this become very acceptable to be covetous and very acceptable to be immoral today because that's the world's way. The third thing that's in the world is so much a part of the world is what the scriptures call the pride of life, which is bitterness. Because, you see, it is pride. It's because of pride. That's the reason we are offended. That's the reason we don't forgive. That's the reason why we are bitter towards people. These three elements are in the world. They are part of the world mindset. Immorality, materialism, bitterness. And these are the three things, by the way, addressed in Hebrews chapter 12. And it says there that by these things we get defiled. And so they're part of the world. The world is your enemy. Well, the question then becomes, how do we deal with the world? And aren't you glad, then, once again, that the scriptures give us the answers. They give us all the answers. All the answers we need. Look at this scripture. Maybe you've even got this one memorized. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, my brothers, by the mercies of God, watch this now, 
that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Next verse. And be not, look at this, conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, here are the three specific steps in this verse that we must do and do diligently, do emphatically, do radically, if you please, if we are to destroy the enemy and not let this enemy destroy us. Number one, here it is. Surrender our bodies to God and keep it surrendered. Look at this scripture. Let not sin... Therefore, reign in your mortal body that you should obey the lust thereof. Look at the next verse. Neither yield you your members, that is the members of your body, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But watch this. Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Now watch this. Um, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Yield your body and the parts of your body to God. The only way to yield your body is to yield all the parts. And so we are to yield all our body parts to God. Surrender our bodies to God. That's the first step, dedicating our bodies and I remember when I first became a Christian, someone gave me this wise advice. And every morning, I would stand in front of the mirror before I went to high school, and I would go through all the members of my body, even those private members that we wouldn't need to speak about here, but surrendering them. These are yours, Lord, these hands. May I only use them for you today. And my eyes and my ears and all the parts of my body. And I must not only surrender my body to the Lord, but I must keep it surrendered. Look at this next verse. Because sin shall not have dominion over you, do, over you if you do this, if we surrender those members of our body to the Lord. Now, the second thing the scripture tells us to do is to develop a non-conformist attitude to the world. Look at this. Surrender your body, and look at the second step, and do not be conformed to the world. Do not let the world squeeze you into its mold. In fact, if the enemy can mess with your head, he will win. And that's why we must reject the conforming, squeezing, pressuring, manipulating, mind-bending, mesmerizing powers of the world because they want to get inside us and make us like them. And so the scriptures come along and say, if you want to deal with this enemy, you want to give your body to the Lord, surrender it, keep it surrendered. And number two, be non-conforming to the ideas that are coming to you from the world. And then the third step is given to us, and it is this. Renew our minds. Be not conformed to the world, but watch this. Be transformed by the renewing of our minds. How do we do that? Well, we get the thoughts of God, which are the opposite to the thoughts of the world, and we build them into our mind. In fact, one of the Hebrew words that has to do with getting wisdom has to do with pounding it in. I don't know how you learned the multiplication table when you were young, but I remember walking the floor. Two times two is four, two times three is six, and two times four is eight, and then and that was fine until I got to the eight times nine is 72, but how do you learn those things? You just pound them in. And there are things from the pages of God's Word that we must just literally pound them into our minds in order to get our minds to think the renewed, think the right, think the godly way. Because if we don't do this, the world will fill in and we'll think like them. And if we think like them, we will feel like them and we will act like them and we will be like them. The world is an enemy. So how do we deal with this enemy? We surrender our bodies to God. Secondly, we develop a non-conformist attitude to the world. And number three, we renew our minds. Now, the second enemy is not just the world, but the second one is the flesh. In fact, I'll tell you what all three, the world, the flesh, and we're going to deal with the devil in a moment. 
But enemy number two is the flesh, our flesh. Look at the scripture. For the flesh lusts or works against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Now watch this. And these are contrary one to another. Watch this phrase. So that you cannot do the things that you would do. Because our flesh wants to rule us. Well, if this flesh and the spirit are against each other, and if it stops us from doing what we should do, how shall we then deal with the flesh? So here are the three steps that come from Scripture. Number one, crucify the flesh. That's what to do with the lusts of the flesh. Look at the Scripture. For they that are Christ, look at this, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Now, second step is to live by faith. Here again in Galatians, look at this. I am, first step, crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, watch this now, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live, now look at this, I live, uh, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We do not walk by the course of the world. We do not walk by the dictates of our flesh. The opposite is to walk by faith. It's to walk by the Word of God. That's what it means to walk by faith. By what God says is true. For we walk not by sight, but by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. You see, if we walk by sight, that's the same as walking by how we see the rest of the world walking. We don't walk that way. And we don't walk by our feelings. We subdue our feelings. We don't walk by lustly flesh like Paul. The scripture says, and he said this, he said, I keep my body under control. I keep my flesh under control. Lest having preached to others, I myself would become a castaway. How do we deal with the flesh? Number one, we must crucify the flesh. Number two, we must live by the word, live by faith. And number three, look at this, we are to walk in the spirit. Oh, here's a delightful verse. This I say then, look at now. Walk in the spirit, because if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You see... The flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary one to another so that you would not do uh, the things that you would. But look at this now. But if you be led of the spirit, then it's a different story. So how do we deal with this enemy of our own flesh that wants to rise up and rule it? Number one, we crucify it. Number two, we live by faith in the Word of God instead of by what our flesh says. And number three, we learn to walk in the Spirit, obeying the Spirit, listening to the Spirit, living, walking, talking in the Spirit. You know why? For the Scripture says this, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So we walk in the Spirit and the Scripture says we will not fulfill this lust thing. So, we must learn how to deal with the world. Then enemy number one. Enemy number two is lust or our flesh. And then enemy number three is this person the Bible refers to as the devil. A fallen angel once upon a time, a, a good angel, but chose to leave God and go his own way. And look what the scripture says about this devil. And if you don't think the devil is your enemy, I want you to get this verse. And you may wonder why so many things go wrong in your life, and not all of them are caused by the devil. We know that's true. Some are because of the world's way of thinking. Some of them are our own flesh. In fact, if I could kick the one responsible for most of my problems, I probably wouldn't be able to sit down for a week. But there is a devil that is against you, and he's against me, and he causes a lot of trouble. He is your enemy. Look at the scripture. Be sober. In other words, be serious about this.
be vigilant, really be on the watch for this. And here's the reason, because, look at this now, your adversary, your adversary, your adversary, your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. He is out to kill. He is out to steal from you, and he's out to destroy everything about your life. You have an enemy, the devil. He has a lot of help, too. A lot of demons work with him, and they are the arch enemies of God, and the only way they can get back of God is to get you whom God loves. Oh, don't ever forget that. You are mightily loved by God. God. You are God's prized possession. God's intentions for you are so wonderful. He intends to give you eternal life. He, he's got big plans for you after this life. He's got big plans for you in this life. He wants you to have life and have it abundantly, Jesus said in, in John 10.10. 10. But this enemy, this thief comes to steal from you, to kill, to destroy to put you down. He's called the accuser of the brethren. There's nothing nice about him. He doesn't have any nice rules he plays by. In fact, he will damn children. He is against little children because he's the devil. And the devil is like that. And he is your enemy. And look what the scripture goes on to say. Whom resists, referring to the devil, resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But he is your enemy, and we are to resist him. Well, the question becomes, how do you deal with the devil? What do you do with the devil? And there's a scripture that gives us the precise three steps of how you can absolutely be victorious over the devil. Let's look at the scripture. Here's what it says. In James, chapter 4, verse 6, Wherefore he saith, look at this, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Look at this now. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist, look at this, resist the devil, and he, the devil, will flee from you. Now watch the scripture with me, because I've met a lot of people who have resisted the devil without excess. They've said, I resist you, devil, I rebuke you, devil, and they go after the devil and go after the devil, but the devil's still after them. He didn't flee. You see, resist him we should. Watch this now. But in this scripture, it tells us that we will be ineffective in resisting if we skip the first two parts of God's instruction on dealing with the devil. Watch, here's what they are. Number one, humble ourselves. Now, I want you to see this scripture because Michael, that great archangel, was contending with the devil. And watch this. He did not dare bring against the devil an, a railing accusation, but he said, the Lord rebuke you. We can get so cocky and think that we can deal with the devil ourselves without the Lord. And that's simply not true. And if we try to deal with the devil from a prideful perspective, we lose already. That's why the scripture says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. This is, in the, you know, the verse in front of that, word in front of that verse is wherefore, or for this reason. This is why God is giving us this instruction to humble ourselves so that we can properly deal with the devil. You don't have to yell and scream at him. You can just humble yourself, and I can humble myself before the Lord. And if we do that, uh, we're on the first a third of the journey of being able to beat the devil. Now look at the second one. The second command is submit yourself to God. Look at this now. Here it is in Scripture. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. A lot of people try to resist the devil, but haven't done the first two commandments, humble ourselves, and number two, submit to God. If we submit to God, 
humble ourselves, then submit to God, and then we resist the devil, the devil will flee from you. Now, before I go further, let me tell you that there are some times where the Bible tells us to flee and sometimes where it tells us to fight. Now, we never flee from the devil. We resist him after humbling ourselves and submitting to God, and he will flee from us. But there are other things that we do flee, like flee youthful lust. You don't fight lust, you flee lust. Never flee if God says fight, never fight if God says flee. But here in dealing with the devil, God says just humble yourself, submit to me, and then when you resist the devil, he will flee. Never forget that our power to deal with the devil comes from God. Jesus said it this way. He said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But you see, the power of God only comes to those submitted or surrendered to God. You see, if we're going off in our own direction, God doesn't empower us to do evil. God doesn't even empower us to do selfishness. God gives power to those who are submitted to His will. So, humble ourselves, submit to God, and then look at the third step. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. That's the third step. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And he will flee and he will flee. Three simple steps dealing with this adversary, the devil. Humble ourselves, submit to God, get in the will of God, yield to God. Get the power of God, because the power of God comes from yielding. And then when you flee, or excuse me, well then when you resist the devil, he flees. Can't overemphasize this important part about yielding to the Holy Spirit, yielding, yielding to God. I remember Many, many years ago in Life magazine, there was a picture taken after a hurricane. It was a picture of a wooden telephone pole. And sure enough, just like the picture looked and the scientists measured it, there was a straw that went in one side of the telephone pole and stuck out the other. And they couldn't understand how could a little straw go through a telephone pole. I mean, it would just fall apart. They couldn't understand how that could happen. What a phenomena. Somebody saw it, took a picture of it, and they looked at it. And the only explanation they could give was this one. They said, the scientists said, that that straw was so surrendered to the power of the tornado, so yielded to the power of the tornado, that the tornado drove it right through. You may not be very strong in yourselves, but I tell you, my friends, that when you and I yield to this blessed Paraclesis of the paraclete, the third person of the Trinity, this Holy Spirit, and yield to Him. Things He can do through us are mighty. And as we yield to Him and then resist the devil, He will flee. So how do we deal with the devil? We, so we first of all, uh, humble ourselves. And secondly, we yield to God, submit to God. And number three, we resist Him, and then He flees. So, Three enemies. The three enemies are the world, the flesh, and the devil. Those are your three enemies. How, we, how do we deal with the world? We surrender our bodies. Number two, we adopt a nonconformist attitude to the world. And number three, we renew our minds. That's how we prevent the world from getting into us. And the second enemy is the flesh. And how do we deal with the flesh? Number one, we crucify the flesh. Number two, we live by faith, by what the Word says, and walk by our feelings. And then number three, we walk in the Spirit. We not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And then how do we deal with the devil? Number one, we humble ourselves. Number two, we submit to God. Number three, we then resist the devil, and the devil flees. We must deal with all three of these enemies. And in closing, I want you to look at the order in which we have taught about this today. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Now watch this now. We must deal with the world first. Because if we don't stop the world with its immoral lust of the flesh, pride of life, and lust of the eyes, 
getting into us, we'll never get rid of the flesh because our flesh is getting fed by those things that are in the world. So we want to deal with the world first. And then we want to deal with our flesh. Because you see, the truth is that this devil here is working through all three of these. Sometimes directly, but he's working through the ideas and the thoughts of immoral people of the world. Wrong ideas, contrary to God. And then he's got this enemy within us, our own flesh. If we deal with the world, we won't have as big a trouble dealing with our flesh. If we deal with the world and then deal with our flesh, we won't have a very big problem dealing with the devil. Especially when we follow these three instructions for dealing with the world, three instructions for dealing with the flesh, three instructions for dealing with the devil. And if we do these instructions, not just know them, but we have to do them, you can destroy the influence of the world from coming in and robbing you of the thoughts of God. You can stop your flesh from ruling your life. You can be in control. And the devil will flee from you because you are filled with the power of God. Thank you.